Rigsby, have you thought any more about the room? I well, thought about it, yes. And you said you'd consider me. Did I? Yeah, you did say that. No, no, you couldn't afford a room like this. How much is it? Six. Six? Yeah. You can't charge six for this. Why not? It's too small. Oh, no, it looks small. That's the heavy wallpaper. <laughs> Should have used paler colours. But you couldn't get a room like this for less than six. I mean, look at it. Eh? Functional with just a hint of luxury. <laughs> yes, it should appeal to the professional class. All I've got to do is get a phone in. Who put a phone in here? It'd look like a telephone box. <laughs> oh, very funny. If it's so small, why do you want it? Because it's freezing up there and it's damp. I've told you before, it is not damp. I've got rising damp. My furniture's falling to pieces. How can you have rising damp in the attic? Eh? <laughs> if you're higher than the crows up there, should be very healthy, like Switzerland. Switzerland? Riggs me, my suits are going green. Yes, I don't deny your suits are going green, but it is not rising damp. What is it, then? Condensation. <laughs> Condensation? Yes, and you know why? Because you will try and cook a five-course meal on one gas ring. <laughs> I can't see you for steam some nights. That's because it's so cold up there. Yes, of course it's cold. Never said it wasn't. There's nothing between this house and the Urals. <laughs> you know, you're breathing the same air as the Tartars up there, you know. Look how long they live. I should charge you extra. I can't go on like this, Rigsby. I've forgotten what it's like to wear open neck shirts. And I can't spread butter. I tear great holes in the bread. <laughs> I can't study. The brain won't function at such low temperatures. Uh, not the only thing that won't function, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Which, in your case, isn't a bad thing. Anyway, when did you last study? Eh? The only thing you study is your navel. You even shave lying down. <laughs> When did you last go to the college? My God, they must have forgotten what you look like down there. Of course they haven't. I go regularly. How oh, can you? Your hair's never dry. Ah, <laughs> oh, so that's it. It's my hair, is it? Well, let me tell you, Jesus Christ had long hair. Now, that's enough of that. What? Don't you go comparing yourself with him. You show a bit of respect. But it's true, he did have long hair. He didn't have a hair dry, though, did he? <laughs> <laughs> didn't give himself blow waves. I'll tell you one thing, if Jesus Christ came down to earth today, he wouldn't get this room. Well, not? Well, for one thing, he'd have to have his hair cut, and for another thing, he couldn't afford it. Oh, <laughs> very funny. Anyway, this room contains my own personal property, you see. Most of this furniture belonged to my father. He died, and that's the tea. <laughs> so? So, it's a question of respecting his memory. I'll respect his memory. No, 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 you don't understand. He was a man of very high principles. Do you know, he once got off a bus rather than sit against a woman with bare arms. That's the sort of man. <laughs> What's that got to do with it? So how's he going to feel when the 1974 Sex Olympics start on that city? <laughs> I can't get a woman to come back here, Rigsby. I've tried to take one look at that place and remember a previous appointment. Uh, I know, I told you. Get it cut, get it cut. It might improve your chances if you didn't look so much like Rasputin. <laughs> no, I don't believe it, Rigsby. You're so narrow-minded. Just because I've got long hair is no reason to dislike me. Do you know, I think you only grew your hair long so as you could say that's why people disliked you. I think they disliked you before. Well, they don't dislike me as much as they dislike you. Who dislikes me? I'll punch their heads in. <laughs> Hello, Alan. Oh, Mr Rigsby. I wonder if I could have a word. Yes, yes, of course, Miss Jones. Yes, you want to come down to my room? No, no, it won't take a moment. Ah, okay. you excuse me? Oh. I'll leave the door open. I'm sorry. <laughs> Please, shall I show you? I was wondering, Mr Rigsby, I have a student um, at the college sorry. who needs a room. <laughs> Is this one available? Student? Oh, uh, I don't know about that, Miss Jones. Well, I wouldn't normally ask, but accommodation is such a problem at the college, and it is my responsibility. Yes, of course. Yes, well, I'd certainly like to do you a, a favour, Miss Jones, of course. But, uh, I mean, uh, look what happened last time when we got him up there. You mustn't be too hard on Alan. I think he's shy and lonely. Yeah, so was Crippin. <laughs> Do you know, he's just, he's just had the nerve to ask for this room himself. Oh. You know. Yes, I wasn't having him down here, not next door to you taunting you with his rock music. I mean, it wouldn't be fair not to a woman of your refinement. Y y you know, Miss Jones, uh, there are some men who'd, uh, who'd try to take advantage of a single woman like you living on her own. Do you think so, Mr. Oh, what? <laughs> you know, if you don't mind me saying so, Miss Jones, you, you waste too much time on these students. You ought to think of yourself more. You, you need the companionship of someone nearly your own age. Someone who's, who's seen something of the world, who's knocked about a bit. <laughs> who, who's understanding, you know, with a sense of humour. <laughs> I don't meet people like that, Mr. Rigsby. <laughs> this, um, 
This student, Miss Jones, is he? he hasn't got long hair, has he? No, as a matter of fact, it's quite short. Mr Smith is rather aristocratic. Oh, aristocratic. Smith. Yeah. And I must say, he seems a perfect gentleman. Oh, well, it's a long time since we had one of those around here. <laughs> and he's very conscientious and hard-working. Oh. In fact, Mr Smith is a very mature student. Ah. He a friend of yours? No, no, I've only met him briefly. Oh. I do appreciate this, Mr. Rick. Oh, well, anything for you, Miss Jones, as you know. <laughs> How much is the rent? Oh, should we say four pounds? Well, that sounds very reasonable. Oh, not at all. Thank you very much. Oh, Mr. Yeah. Anything else, any, any time. <laughs> hey, hey, Vienna. Hey, hey. Oh, hey. I think I did myself a bit of good there. <laughs> <laughs> I want that table. <laughs> what for? It belongs downstairs. Well, I'm eating off it. I warned you might want it at any time. Why don't you wait till I've finished? Look, I can't wait for you to stop eating, mate. Life's too short. <laughs> Come on. I have to eat, Rigsby, in order to keep warm. Oh. I've never seen anyone clear a plate faster than you. <laughs> it's as if you're feeding something under the table. <laughs> Come on, come on, I'm doing you a favour, really. You ought to take your knife and fork as well. Come on. I'll be careful, you'll spill it. God, oh, what a mess. It's... You're not cooking these dried peas again, are you? <laughs> What's wrong with that? They get everywhere. They come drumming down the stairs like great jobs. <laughs> it's all right for you, you'd have to clean them up. Come on, come on, I've got to get on. Come on, come on. Why are you in such a hurry? I've got a gentleman coming. A what? A gentleman. What's he coming for? As a matter of fact, he's coming for the room. Ah, mm. so that's it. Yes, that's it. Well, he won't stay. Uh, oh, yes, he will. Just as long as you keep away from him. You're not getting that room, all what right? What do you mean? Don't think I don't know why the last one left. He went for a cheaper room. No, no, he didn't. He left because he found a jar marked diphtheria germs in his bed. <laughs> so you keep away from him. Right, let's have that table. Come on. What about my friend? Been looking forward to a meal. He hasn't had one for weeks. Hmm? <laughs> Where did that come from? Why oh, don't you recognise him, Rigsby? He's the fellow that had the room before me. <laughs> He's the one who was complaining about the cold. Don't you look, say hands with Mr. Rigsby. Get him out of here. Why? It's morbid, that's why. <laughs> I should have thought you'd been used to sights like this after your exploits in the Western Desert. Oh, oh, don't you worry. I've seen more of those bleached by the desert sun than you've had at dinners, but I don't want one in the house, so you get him out. Look, I have to study anatomy, Rigsby. How can I set bones if I don't know what they look like? Set? But they never let you set bones. Why? God. Look what happened when you examined Vienna. He only had a slight limp. By the time you'd finished with him, it was a dislocated hip. <laughs> Listen, mate, if they ever make you a doctor, I shall write to the medical council. Well, at least it's someone to talk to, and it's musical. <laughs> dem bones, dem bones, dem bones, dem bones, dem That's not funny. <laughs> Won't do you any good, you know. What do you mean? Well, Miss Jones, I know why you're doing it, dirty old man. Why? Nothing could be further from my mind. She's a respectable woman. Oh, yeah? Then why do you clean her windows three times a week? <laughs> you thank your lucky stars I'm holding this table. <laughs> hey, and you better watch your step. Things are beginning to look up around here. There might not be room for you now. Not now I'm getting in a better class of tenant. Excuse me. <laughs> my name's Smith. Is this my room? Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's done it. Uh. Done what? Well, didn't you see him? She said he was aristocratic. Aristocratic. Probably never had a pair of shoes on till he came here. <laughs> Don't tell me you're prejudiced, Rigsby. After all, we're all supposed to be brothers. He's not my brother. <laughs> my brother lives in Accrington. <laughs> hey, hey, did you, uh, did you see that mark on his cheek? Eh? Initiation ceremony. That's no different from the Germans in the duelling scars. He didn't get that in Heidelberg. <laughs> That's a tribal mark, you know. <laughs> uh, so what's going to happen when he hears the drums? Eh? Oh, oh, no, oh, wait. oh, you wait. You wait till the next full moon. We'll all be locking our doors. <laughs> you wait till we get the washing of spears. Rigsby, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. He's a stranger here. We should be making him feel at home. Yeah, perhaps you're right. Hey, where's that jar of diphtheria, Jim?
<laughs> so you've made yourself at home then? Yeah. What do you think of it? It seems very nice. Oh, yes, it seems nice, yes. That's the wallpaper. Very good quality. But it has to be to hold these bricks together. <laughs> eh? See the way they've, they've come, come in here. Look at this. See the way the bricks have come away from the woodwork. Here, you can put your fist right in there. Look at that. Yes, and look, this house holds back half the town, you know. Yeah. And of course, we're very high up here. I'm insured against low flying aircraft. It's in the policy. <laughs> and there's nothing between this house and Russia. Who told you that? Miss Jones did happen to mention. How, uh, how well do you know Miss Jones? Not very well, but she's in administration. Oh, oh yes, I know that. I know all about Miss Jones. Yeah. Uh, she's a friend of mine, but I'm not rushing it. <laughs> all right with you? Yes. No, yeah. You know, nothing personal, you know, but we don't have any uh, misunderstandings, do we? It's what I told young Lenin upstairs. <laughs> Who? The one upstairs, the one with the long hair. Did you see him right down to his shoulders? <laughs> Is he at the university? Yeah. I don't think I know him. No, you wouldn't, no. He only goes out after dark. <laughs> hey, watch this gas. It'll take your head off. Now, if it starts hissing like a snake, don't try and light it, whatever you do. Leave that door open to fetch me, all right? Did I mention the rent? Yes. Six pound a week and I insist on a month in advance. Miss Jones didn't mention that. <laughs> no, just right. <laughs> uh, come on, Vienna. Come on. Isn't that a strange name for a cat? We don't think so. Why do you call him Vienna? Ah, oh, well, no. You take this cat to the door on the coldest night of the year, when you'd have to kick a pole about that, never mind a cat. You show him the front door, and if he sees another pair of eyes out there, it's good night, Vienna. <laughs> Welcome to Bleak House. Uh, mind if I come in for a warm? Uh, I'm Alan Moore. Live upstairs. Philip Smith. How do you do? <laughs> you know, this is great. What is? Are you coming to live here? Why? Well, we've never had a... <laughs> a what? Well, I I've never known a... It'll be an experience. What sort of experience? I don't know. Let's get one thing straight. I'm not an experience. No, no, no. Of course not. No. <laughs> what do you think of Rigsby? I don't know. Is he mad? Probably. <laughs> he lives downstairs, all alone with his cat. <laughs> no one's ever been in his room. Some say that he was jilted on his wedding day and he sits down there all night with the remains of the cake. I was hoping to get some peace and quiet here. I do have a lot of work to do. Of course, yeah, yeah, I won't disturb you. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> well, well, um, well, look, if, if there's anything you want, don't hesitate to ask, right? <laughs> Good night, Philip. Good night. <laughs> Philip, at last. I've been so impatient waiting for the others to go. I wanted to give you a proper welcome. <laughs> Are you all right for butter? <laughs> Do you think we should be doing this? Do you realise this is the first time we've been alone since that night? What night? That night. You haven't forgotten, Philip. Oh, that night. Don't you remember? You said my skin was like the skin of fruit. I thought that was lovely. So poetical. What fruit did you mean, Philip? <laughs> Ruth, I'm rather busy at the moment and we've got to think of appearances. I don't care about appearances. Let's be impulsive. Let's drink life to the dregs. <laughs> Is that Rigsby? Rigsby? We should have to be careful. He can be very funny about this sort of thing. What will he do? Well, he cuts my water off. <laughs> Not that I care. Not anymore. Black on white, Philip. What's the matter? Nothing. 
I'm just thinking how much work I've got to do. Do you ever think about that night, Philip? The way we ran hand in hand in the pouring rain? You do find the rain primitive, don't you, Philip? Mary, I wanted to get a taxi. Do you remember what we said to each other? You said you could get me a flat. I didn't know you were going to be next door. How am I going to get any work done? Work can wait, Philip. <laughs> Perhaps we can exchange our supplements sometime, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Mr. Rigsby. I'm Jim. What was she doing up here? She came to see if there was anything I wanted. Oh, I see. You don't want anything, do you? No. All <laughs> oh, right. Because, because if there is, you know, you, you come to me. Huh? Here's your rent book. Thank you. I, I've, I've marked. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> well, this. <laughs> it gets more like a lady's hairdresser's every day. <laughs> well, he's staying. Just can't get rid of him. I've tried being diplomatic. Now I shall have to get nasty. Because we have told you we should all try and live together. You're prejudiced. No, I'm not. You don't even like people with heavy suntans. <laughs> oh, what about the trouble I had with that Indian who was here, eh? All that cooking and bringing his friends in. He used to arrive with 24 of them in the back of a taxi. <laughs> I never complain, and what happens, eh? Left owing a month's rent. I bet you squeezed him out. No, I didn't. He went on a day trip to Boulogne. They wouldn't let him back in again. <laughs> What's that got to do with Philip? I don't know why Miss Jones had to bring him here in the first place. Perhaps she fancies him. You watch your tongue. <laughs> it's not like that. She's a respectable woman. She saved herself. What well, for? For the right man. Not you, Rigsby. Oh, why not? I thought you said she was respectable. Uh, she is. But underneath, you see, she's untapped. There's a lot of, a lot of pent-up force there. One of these days, she's going to burst like a dam, and I'll be waiting. Perhaps a dam's been burst already. No. Anybody tries to come between me and her. <laughs> oh, there they are. Did you want something, Rigsby? Uh, uh, no, 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 just, uh, you know, just seeing you'd, you'd settle in, that was all. Well, if you don't mind. Because the last tenant in here, he never did settle somehow. He seemed to sense an atmosphere, you know. What sort of atmosphere? You know, bad spirits. What? Well, you see, years ago a man died in here, in this room, in horrible circumstances. <laughs> took, his, took his own life whilst the balance of mine was disturbed. I think I know the feeling. <laughs> I'm only surprised that he found the time. Well, it doesn't worry you, then? No. Uh, well, I just thought I'd mention it, you know, just in case you were of a, of a, of a nervous disposition. God, look at the cat! Look, the way he's first, and then end. <laughs> he can sense it. Oh. Him and me, we wouldn't spend a night in here, not for a fortune. I'm relieved to hear it. Yeah. Now, if you don't mind. <laughs> Horrible circumstances. like being in the middle of a sponsored walk. How can I work under these conditions? You're working too hard, Philip. You should try and relax. Why don't you come and lie down? Shall I turn the covers back for you? <laughs> what was that doing here? It's not mine. What's it doing in your bed? There are other things you can go to bed with, you know. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. Now then, Mama Lulu, what's your little game, eh? Do you think you can start that sort of thing round here that happens to be a respectable house? Oh, don't be ridiculous, Rigsby. He's perfectly respectable. He happens to be the son of a chief. Uh, son of a what? Son of a chief. A paramount chief. Oh, my God. Son of a chief? Well, he never said nothing to well, me. He doesn't want anybody to know. Well, he wants to be bloody secretive. I'm trying to be an ordinary life. All I want is to be left alone. That's how you feel, Philip. Son of a chief, eh? It's not important. Oh, no, it's not important. You don't have to tell me that. Just your look, isn't it? I suppose you, uh, you come from an old family, huh? Yes. Yes, born to it, yes, yes. 
It was the same in wartime, you know. My, my old captain, he came from a good family. Not like these tuppenny apenny gentlemen you get nowadays. He always carried a walking stick, smoked a pipe. Uh, I never saw him ruffled. Whenever Jerry had opened up, he'd just lean on his stick and say, Where do you think that's coming from, Sergeant? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone would leap for cover, not the captain. What <laughs> happened to him? He got blown up by a shell. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose, uh, you know, being the, uh, being the son of a chief, you can have your pick. What? You know, women. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Is it true that your women are much more, you know? Oh, yes. Much more. Yes, I've heard that. Yes. It's a medical fact. They get far more excited. Yeah. Ours are always getting headaches. <laughs> Yours get headaches? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Miss Jones gets headaches. Terrible ones. She has to wear blue glasses. Yeah. Of course, you're, you're very hard on your women, aren't you? What do you mean? Well, you know, you make them walk for miles in the hot sun with pots on their head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to keep them in their place. Eh? What are you doing? I'm going. Isn't that what you wanted? Oh, oh I say, uh, not good enough for you, is that it? Really? But just because you're the son of a chief, you know, you needn't look down your nose at this place. <laughs> very, very fashionable area here, you know. We had the manager of the co-op drapery staying here last year. <laughs> he never complained. You know, we're getting breezes straight off the Euros here, you know. I can't stop here, Rigsby. I never get any yes, work but done. just a minute. Where, what, what about my rent? Where, where do you think you're going to find another room in this town, eh? Hey? Uh, uh, there's no need to be hasty. There is another room. Uh, uh, much quieter. <laughs> just a minute. <laughs> Just bringing your table back, that's all. Oh, oh thanks, that's great. Hey, I, I, sh I shouldn't go in there, uh, not with your curlers in, anyway. <laughs> hey, what's going on? This is my room. I beg your pardon, but this is my room. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rigsby, I'm not sharing. Oh, never yeah. mind. I think you still never went to You are the Vestal Virgins. You'll get used to it. <laughs> you can be brothers or sisters. Huh? <laughs> 